Today we are going to be making two types of lasagna, one vegetarian, one meat version, and we're going to be taking about 20 minutes and Simon is going to be talking us through that. So let's get on with it. Simon, what are you doing at the moment? Okay, hi, I'm uh, preparing for a vegetable lasagna. We're going to make two today, the meat and a vegetarian option. The meat one is your traditional uh, lasagna, so we might start with that actually. Okay. Um, I've actually made the sauce already and the bechamel. Um, to make the sauce, it's really just like a bolognese sauce. So start with some onions, celery, carrot, um, and you want to cook those on low to medium heat for around five to eight minutes. Get them soft, add your mince if you're using uh, mince, and brown that off a little, add some tomato paste, and then canned tomatoes. And you have some to show us already? I do, oh, okay. yes, we have some here. <laughs> so this is the sauce already made. And that's regular mince. What meat, what meat did you put into this? I used veal. Okay. Yeah, so um, I like veal, but you could use beef, you could use pork. Uh, you could actually use any mix of the three. Um, but um, for the veal, I, I like to use white wine as well, sorry, I forgot to mention that. So put in some white wine, uh, just um, half a cup of that. And um, if I was using beef, I'd probably use red wine, a bit gutsier okay. for the beef flavor. Uh, and then really the longer you cook it, the better it's going to be. How long have you cooked this? That was cooking for well over an hour. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And actually gets better the next day as well. Yeah. And then the, the bechamel, um, it's a white sauce. Um, I can show you that here. Um, really, to make this, it's um, equal portions of fat and uh, flour. So butter is the best form of fat for this. Uh, I've used, uh, I think it's 150 grams of each. And then that will give the right consistency for about 800 ml of milk. Or is it 75 grams? I'm not sure. You can find out by looking in, the, um, yeah. in the post. We have all the details for how to, <laughs> to create this dish. So, and how many people will this serve? Oh, that's going to be at least um, six to eight serves, I'd say. Okay, yeah. right. Yeah. So that's the meat version. That's the meat version. So really, they're the only two elements. Uh, and then the lasagna sheets, of course and some parmesan cheese as well. Okay, and yeah. now what are you doing? Um, I'm cooking the eggplant for the vegetarian uh, uh, lasagna, but what we will do is start to construct the beef lasagna. Okay, Yeah. right. Okay, so this is the AEG live cooking. We're showing two different variations on making lasagna, vegetarian and the meat version. And if you have a particular favorite, uh, what type of meat do you use in your lasagna, then please let us know. If you have any questions, then please also uh, write those in. Simon has a lot of knowledge. He'll be able to answer any questions that you might have, right? Sure, <laughs> please send in the questions. So I'm just gonna start with some uh, sauce on the bottom. Uh, and really, what you want to do is, is, is layer the... Um, or you, what you need to do is devise in your own head, really, how much quantity you need for the amount of layers. So we're going for six layers in, the, in this lasagna. Um, so, you, yeah, try and not use the elements up all at once. Okay, so this looks like, so like a, a stew, in effect. It is, yeah. And, I mean, really, you know, we're, we're, we're making one as close as we can to... Um, the authentic. Uh, 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 stop. Oh. You haven't. You haven't. You don't fill the bottom. You just. You just like want this. to easily. Um, you just want to make sure there's liquid covering all okay. the corners. Okay. Yeah. So it's yeah. not chocker block. It's not chocker block. It's right. just so so the pasta doesn't stick to the bottom. Okay. Yeah. And what type of pasta are you using? So these sheets are the instant sheets. Um, they have egg through them, so they cook completely in the oven. You no need to pre-boil them. Um, so, so yeah, they're, they're quite standard. Okay. Yeah, anyway. So, yeah. so far this seems pretty, um, let's say, simple to construct a stew with some broad pasta sheets and then you just layer it up. Exactly, okay. yeah. yeah. So, the reason we're doing this and looking at pasta is because 
we look at search trends around the world to see what people are looking for, for inspiration or information. And uh, making lasagna at home is one of the key searches. Did you know that? Yeah, very popular. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this particular version, I mean, this is something, one of your favorites? With, uh, oh, I the love meal. the classic one. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you could really use, for example, you had some leftover uh, stew at home, meat stew. You, you could really use that in place of this bolognese style sauce. Um, really, it's just getting the right balance between the creaminess of the bechamel and the meat sauce. So if you had an old stew, there's no reason why you couldn't use that here. Okay. Yeah. And it, again, it won't be too authentic or Italian, but uh, it would, it's very likely still going to taste good. Okay. <laughs> Now you say it's Italian, but bechamel is actually a French construct sauce, right? right. Yeah, okay. I, it is. And um, yeah, interesting because we, we found out that the lasagna's origins are said to be in Napoli. But um, yeah, I was interested because uh, I don't know if they'd have bechamel in Napoli. So perhaps it's adapted over okay. the years. Maybe, yeah. maybe. And you're, when you put the bechamel on top of the sauce, again, you just... You didn't cover it. You just put it on quite sporadically. Yeah, I think yeah. when it cooks, it's going to melt down and yeah. it's going to spread itself. So I like to put a little parmesan. You can put parmesan um, into the bechamel, uh, or you can also use it here just as a light sprinkle on each layer as you go. Okay. Yeah. So basically, this is like copy paste. Yeah. You just keep from going. here on in. It's just duplicating. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And when you make this meat version, are you yeah. always using? Uh, veal. I mean, it, does it depend on the time of the year or seasonality or? No, no, no not at all. I, I just like veal for the flavor, but um, yeah, like I said, pork or beef could also be used. Yeah. Okay. Even like if you, I think a real authentic ragu bolognese a la Bologna, you could use a chuck steak and, and grind it up yourself and make a really nice long cooked, um, deep flavored uh, ragu and, and use that as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Something you do? I've done it before, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, it, it makes a bit of a mess of the um, food mixer, though, so I understand why mince is uh, easier for, for most, yeah. Okay, so this is layer number two. Two. Yeah, how many layers are you doing? So I, yeah, it's, it's tricky. I'm going to do six layers. You think you're going to put six in that bowl? I'm going to have to press it okay, down, right. I think, yeah. Okay, so this is the AG Home Cooking. Uh, we're learning how to make uh, fantastic lasagna. Uh, we're currently on the meat version. Uh, we're also going to be looking at a vegetarian version as well. Once Simon has layered up this particular meat version and put it in the oven. But <laughs> it looks like quite a lot of fun. It is. Uh, <laughs> a bit repetitive, but, you know. So if you have any questions for us, please don't hesitate to write in. Uh, we're using veal, but um, when I make a lasagna at home uh, or a stew, I need, normally buy uh, mince uh, pork. That works? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Pork's good. I've, I've found a little trick I like to do in here. Let's see if I got the tongs. Um, <clears throat> Just got the rind of a parmesan in here as well. And what, can, what does that do? Just adds a nice deep flavor to it. Yeah, okay. the umami flavor from parmesan. And how long was that in there? You added it at the start? I, I added like halfway through cooking the, uh, the sauce. Okay. And why are you going for six layers? I mean, could I do fewer? Yeah, you could do fewer or less. I mean, I, I think because there's a, a lot of flavor and, and um, punch in this bechamel and meat, I think you can go a little more pasta. Okay. Um, and um, I mean, really, yeah, because the more sheets you put, the more sauce you're going to need. So we'll get a bit more sauce in here. Um, because if there's not enough between the sheets, it could dry out. All right. Yeah. And you have some spices in there? I, no, not in this one, no. but I could recommend, like I, I've actually made it before where I've used a little fennel seed in the meat sauce. Okay. That's delicious. All right. Yeah. Oh, we have a, a question. Let me see here. Do one more layer. Yeah, that was about the spices. So fennel seed. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah I think fennel seed's a really nice one. Maybe a touch of chili if you like chili. Uh-huh. Okay. But is that yeah. Italian? Sorry? Is that Italian? 
Oh, I think so, yeah. It's Southern Italian. Okay. I've also got bay leaves in here as well. They're not essential, but they do add to the flavor. Okay, so we're getting there. What layer is this? I think I've lost count, to be honest. Now what you want to do is save a little extra bechamel because you want to have a nice thick layer of bechamel on the top. Okay. It's going to make a beautiful top. Okay. So because I'm getting low, I'll just put that amount there. It looks pretty good. Oh, I forgot the cheese. And do you put cheese on every layer? Yeah, I do. Okay. You don't have to. But I love parmesan, so. Okay, so that's ready. And now we're going to put the final layer of bechamel. And this has to go on the top. This has to go on the top. Okay. Also got a tip um, from someone to put uh, a tomato on top. So I might put some sliced tomato. Okay. Yeah. okay. That's not something you've done before. No. Okay. But I like the sound of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the AEG Home Cooking. We're looking at how to up your game when it comes to making lasagna. Uh, we're currently finishing off the meat version, which will go into the oven. Uh, once Simon Smith has in. put some tomato on top yes. of it. Uh, if you have any questions for Simon about different things that you could include in a lasagna, uh, then please don't hesitate to write in. Uh, and we are live in many different countries today looking at lasagna. And also the reason we're doing this is because it appears on the top of the search trends in Google for people looking for information and inspiration when cooking at home. So, we are nearing the completion for our meat version of the lasagna. Yes, that's right. That's a beef tomato, right? Yeah, it is. But Beautiful you could, tomato. You could use any type, I guess. You could, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, this just gives a nice splash of color as a garnish. Okay, it does look very nice, yeah. And um, also important to put a lot of parmesan on the top. Okay. Save, save a good amount. There's a lot here because we're using it in the next lasagna. Okay, and could I use any other type of cheese? Oh yeah, um, I think Parmesan's perfect. Um, I wouldn't use, I'd, I'd use perhaps some other Italian cheeses, a Pecorino or something. Okay. Um, you could use a cheddar, but it's- I would. Steering <laughs> a little away from Italy. <laughs> but it's got a nice salty flavor too. Yeah, so. Maybe yeah. that's why I'm not cooking and you are, because I might <laughs> use a cheddar. <laughs> All right, so that's ready to go in. And we're gonna use the steam function. Um, if you have, uh, don't have a steam function on your oven, you could use foil on top. And the reason for that is just to trap in the moisture. Um, but in the last 15 minutes, you'd want to take that foil off so you get a nice crust because that's very important on top. <laughs> so that's going into the steam oven and that'll be 40 minutes. And then you do another 15 minutes okay. on a dry oven. And you explain why we're using the steam oven, right? The steam. Yes, the steam. The steam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gives a nice moisture. We have a question from uh, Pam in the UK, uh, and she wants to know why uh, she puts the sauce after the pasta. Why is yours the other way? It's the sauce after yeah, the so pasta you put, on the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that an option? That's not wrong. They can do that, right? <laughs> um, you could. I just thought it would probably grab on the bottom. Okay. Because um, the dry being the liquid would seep down and it would stick. Okay. So having a little sauce on the bottom stops it from sticking. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you could just use straight oil or pure bechamel. Yeah. But I just use the sauce. Okay, so yeah. it's just a practical sticking issue. And perhaps, Pam, you don't have that. But if you do, now you can swap it around. Uh, we also have another question from Dara. Let's have a look at this one. Um, interesting on the Parmesan rind in the rind goo. Amazing flavor from the rind. What cheeses do you use? Could you use any other cheese rind in the ragu? Oh, again, I, a pecorino perhaps, um, but um, I don't think uh, any other rinds would work. No. Uh, no. Okay, so at least yeah. that's very specific. I think it's, I think it's, there's a lot more flexibility with the cheeses when it comes to the vegetarian. Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to show. We're going to start that now. Yeah. Great. So thank you so much for the questions. Please keep them coming. Yeah. Perfect. So to make a nice, quick vegetarian lasagna, I thought, you know, where can we save time? Yeah. And um, I've cooked some eggplant. So that's really, the, the lasagna I'm gonna make, that's the only cooking we need to do for this vegetarian yeah. one. So it's quite fast. But for example, if you had pumpkin or um, some other vegetables, what you need to be mindful of is just that 
they're all going to cook at the same time. So we're going to grate some zucchini because being so fine, it cooks really fast and you don't need to cook it beforehand. Um, so we've got zucchini, we have eggplant, and I've also bought some roasted capsicum. Um, this is great because it's ready to go. I, Sorry, capsicum no, peppers. No, no. I think all of these ingredients have alternative names. You're Australian, I'm English. I'm English. That's true. So we so have aubergine, <laughs> butternut squash, uh, courgette. True. Pepper. And pumpkin. Pumpkin? Oh, that's, yeah, that's your, uh, the butternut squash, right? Paprika, peppers. But again, you know, any doubt, the recipe and the ingredients are all in the post. So, yeah, it should make sense. So to prepare the peppers, I've um, given them a nice rinse just to get that flavor off them that you find in the jar. And um, I'm also going to just give them a splash of balsamic vinegar. Okay. Yeah. Great. And we actually have another question. This is from Alfie. Oh, this is great. We've got yeah. a lot of questions today. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, this is a great one. If you want to make it spicy, yes. would you use fresh chili, chili flakes, chili oil, jalapeno, or something else? Maybe a combination of all of it if you yeah. really want it fiery. I think um, in this scenario where we're making a vegetarian one, it'd be great to stir in some chili flakes into the sauce. Yeah. Um, if I was using chili in the beef, uh, the meat lasagna, I would probably cook the chili in with the onions at the start okay. and the carrot and celery. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so that's one component ready. We also have the eggplant, we've got the zucchini, so I think we can start construction now. Now we're using steam, right? The oven. Yes, here. yeah, yeah. Steam. Now because steam carries heat um, a little bit faster, does mm -hmm. that alter the timing when you're doing, because we have a question again in the UK, does it yeah. matter with the timing? Is it 40 minutes with the steam in the it, 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 it's, it, it's going to be faster than, if you were using a fan force dry oven, I'd say it's about the same, but because we have the setting on quite low for the steam, um, it's going to be 40 minutes as well, but generally steam cooking will be faster. Okay. Yeah. All right. So Rachel, thank you so much for the question. This is on low steam. Um, and it's really to help with the, the lasagna to retain its moisture. And yes, the 40 minutes. So again, thank you for your question. And thank you for your answer, Simon. You're welcome. <laughs> so instead of making a bechamel for this vegetarian lasagna, um, I'm going to make a mixture with some ricotta. Uh, just because it's easy, it's quick, uh, it tastes great with the vegetables. So it's just simply 250 grams in a bowl. And you just want to make that a, a wetter mixture by putting uh, some milk. So I'm gonna put that in. Now also here you could add flavors, herbs, spices, uh, a touch of nutmeg, um, similar to the bechamel. So I think we'll do that actually, because I love nutmeg. Okay, so this is a variation that you said had potential for more variety than the meat version. So you can add any type of vegetables, correct, wrong, no, yes? I think vegetables, <laughs> yeah, I mean, nothing, we're using quite a watery vegetable with the zucchini, but uh, um, courgette. But um, <laughs> the, the, yeah, the, the options are endless. Really, you just need to make sure that it's going to cook through. So, for example, this would be a great combination: the pumpkin with the black cabbage, kale here, and um, and some blue cheese, for example. But if you were going to do that, you'd need to roast those. Okay. The pumpkin. So you pre-roast and then you include it in the... Yeah, exactly. Right. But because grated zucchini and this here is already pre-cooked, we don't need to pre-cook those. Okay, great. Yeah. Right. So here's the consistency that you'll get with the ricotta and it's uh, 100 ml of... Oh no, 50 ml of milk, sorry. And uh, I'm going to use this also for some dried herbs. Just to carry that flavor through. That's just some Italian dried herbs. And also, it's really important when building this one to add salt at every time because yeah. these need salt, this needs salt, everything needs salt. So we're also putting salt in here. Okay. Yeah. Generous with the salt. Generous with the salt okay. and pepper. Uh, mm -hmm. A question, another question. Mm -hmm. um, Johannes, thank you for the question. Now, we were speaking a little bit about making the dish from a stew out of the fridge mm -hmm. and that actually that would be full of flavor. Mm -hmm. Is that the same for the vegetarian option? Could you make it the day before and would you then get a fuller flavor if you ate it the next day? Or should you eat it more or less 
after it comes out of the oven? Um, I think they taste great the next day. The next yeah, day? Yeah, definitely. Okay. I mean, especially with a classic lasagna like this, um, the next day it tastes even better. So that's meat or vegetarian? That's right, yeah. Got it. Thank yeah. you. And thanks for the question. Please keep them coming. We are looking at how to perfect lasagna. Uh, many different opportunities here that we're looking with this vegetarian option. Um, we have a meat version in the oven. And yeah, you know, if you have any questions for us, or any observations, what would you put in your lasagna? Yes, yeah, share with us. What do you do with your lasagna that we should know about? What gives it that uh, certain uh, hit, a certain great taste? If you've got something to share with us, please don't hesitate. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, what's happening now? What are you doing at the moment? So another cheat here, just a nice quick um, technique, is to use some beautiful fresh, uh, well not fresh, but canned tomatoes. But you can see it's got a beautiful, vibrant color, this one. Um, so high quality. Um, and yeah, I don't think you need to cook down a Napoli sauce for a vegetarian lasagna, because it's gonna cook in the oven for quite a while. So using it raw here. This is a Napoli sauce? Well, essentially, if you cook this with some onion and garlic, it's a Napoli so sauce. So a Napoli sauce is yeah. tomato, onion, garlic? Yes. Got yeah. it, thank you. Yeah. I'm learning stuff all this. <laughs> so I'm, start, I'm just gonna take a little out of the can to begin with, just to make that base I talked about earlier. And now I'm going to spice this up with some salt, some olive oil, some pepper, and some herbs. So quite a bit of oil there. So I just mix all this in. I mean, this is quite unusual to me. I've never yeah. seen this happen. You are doing <laughs> the mix in the can. Yes, just uh, to make things nice and fast. Yeah. It's not just to save on the washing up. Well, I guess that's uh, one. <laughs> that's one plus for sure. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you could transfer it to a bowl, certainly. So that's now ready to continue with our layers. So we've got all the elements. We have ricotta, yep. the vegetables, yep. and our sauce. So we can start. So again, it's about portioning. So let's start here. We have, thank you, Christopher in the UK. This is brilliant. Secret weapon is clove. Cloves? Yeah. Uh -huh. Have you used cloves before? The no, I haven't. I imagine that'd be lovely with the meat one. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Nice spice. Actually, I know that. That makes me want to try it for sure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Again, you know, if you have anything that you do at home that you think we should know about, please share it with us. We'd be very grateful. Cloves. Gonna have to Cloves. Try I'm going to try that. Yeah. So I, I know you fried these aubergines yes you slice them how long did you fry them for because they um, don't look fully cooked. they're not fully cooked no. no because i know they'll continue cooking in the oven okay um but it was a few minutes either side right yeah okay. yeah with a little oil and seasoning yeah so now that uh we have those now we're going to put some zucchini uh sorry, <laughs> it's okay <laughs> <laughs> i'm just playing <laughs> So is, I like this idea because there's a lot of moisture in this zucchini. So, you, so have, you haven't cut, you haven't done anything to it. You're just, you're just grating it. Yes. It okay. Other than washed it, I have washed it, and it's ready to go in. And why does it need? It, again, it's going to cook when it's in the oven. I'm asking you questions. I probably can guess the answer to, but it's okay just to grate it like that. Of course, not seen that before. Interesting. Yeah. Well, there's quite a lot of water and. Um, It'll cook quite fast because it's so thin. So, okay. so, so that's there. not something that you need to cook be beforehand as you did with these other. Okay. No, I mean you could. You could also grill them or use some oil and, and use some thicker pieces. But I like this as a nice fast technique. Okay. Yeah. So there's our first layer. So we'll continue building the layers. And again, I see you've started with the sauce on the bottom, not the pasta sheets. So yes, we're yeah. sticking with it. <laughs> sticking with it so it doesn't stick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. And are you going to do six versions with this as well? The six layers? I mean, I'm not even sure we did I, six layers with that one, but... It was six sheets, six perhaps. Sheets. Six, sheet six layers. sheets. But okay. um, I think we'll go one less with this. Okay. Yeah, because these are quite um, thick and... Um, yeah, I think it, this is perhaps less saucy than a traditional lasagna. And... If there's too much pasta, it could soak up all the moisture and it could become a bit, a bit gluggy and we don't want that. No. We want a nice textured lasagna. Okay. Yeah. That's good. 
This is the AG Home Cooking. We are now working on a vegetarian lasagna. We have a meat one in the oven. We're looking at how to up your game or at least provide alternatives to when making a lasagna at home. And the reason we're doing this is because we can see that people all over the world are searching for how to get great results with lasagna. We're just providing two opportunities uh, to try different things. If you have any particular favorite ingredients, whether that's meat or vegetables that you'd like to share with us, please, please do send it to us because then we can share it with more people who are watching. So thank you. How are we doing? Uh, well, so I, on this one, I've skipped a layer of um, eggplant just because we only have 12 pieces of eggplant. So I've, I've put the eggplant on the base. We'll have a middle one without, and then we'll have another layer later on with the eggplant. Okay. Yeah. Right. There's so no real reason for that. There's no reason no. That, other than the, the, the sheer number of uh, aubergines that we yes. have. Okay. They have a thick, thicker um, cut, so um, they'll overtake if we have three layers of eggplant. Oh, okay, all right. So you reduce the number. Okay, got it. So has anything been happening with that mix in the can? Has it been formulating into a beautiful taste in this that time not, yeah or not i think that'll happen when it cooks okay yeah so another layer okay so again you're repeating layer 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 but without yeah. the aubergine okay well th this one we will put an aubergine oh yep. right okay yeah i'm ahead of it or behind it can i help you no that's fine thank you And you finish this off the same way? You put the pasta on top and the, the sauce? Or? Yeah, so we'll use, um, for this one, we're gonna use the mozzarella on top. Mozzarella? Yes, okay. because we, we won't have so much ricotta left over. And I haven't seen you put any Parmesan in this one. No. But you could. You could, definitely. But we're yeah. doing versions of it. Oh my word, that sounds like it's cooked up. Let me just switch this off. Okay. Whilst you do that, I'll check the oven. We're running low on ricotta there, so I'm going to stop there. That looks fantastic. <laughs> I had a sneak look in the oven. I think it looks fantastic. Oh, but you're, you're the judge, not me. But it smelled <laughs> fantastic, I have to say that. Great. Let's see. Okay, so that's ready. We have more questions. Okay, an observation from a viewer globally, chicken liver. Oh chicken yes. Chicken liver, chicken liver, of course in the meat version. Is that something you've used before? Is that delicious. something you've heard about? Yes, delicious, okay. yeah. So not only chicken liver, but having a, a small amount of diced liver through the meat sauce, okay. really delicious. And would yeah. you cook that all at the same time? Or would you do something special with the chicken liver before, or? Yes, that, well that would get added into the meat sauce. Um, normally you'd cook the, probably cook the chicken liver separately in a pan yeah. and even flambe it. It's always a nice way to cook it with liver. And, um, and then probably dice it and add it into the ragu. Okay, so there's a tip if you want to try something with it. Because we give Ooh. it more body. Would it give the lasagna more body, the meat version? Definitely. Okay, yeah, more nice body, deep flavor. Yeah. Add some chicken liver. And you made your meat lasagna with a white wine. Would you use a red wine if you're using the chicken liver, um, say beef, for instance? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You could use some red wine. Yeah. And again, maybe a silly question, but was it just chicken liver, or is the chicken liver liver actually a complement to other meats? It's the complement to other meats. Right. Yeah. So it wouldn't only be the chicken liver. Yeah. I'd like to try that too. So cloves and chicken liver, two of my takeouts from this. <laughs> <laughs> oh golly. Oops. So we've got we're a little low on the ricotta here for the last layer. I would have liked a little more, but we've got the mozzarella to really give the nice amount of um, fat that we need. And really that's that's what we want is nice amount of fat because you want to get that crusty top. So that is now almost ready. I'm just going to put it aside so that I can cut the mozzarella. And
And we'll also go really heavy on the uh, palmas in here, I think. Okay. So you're finishing off the vegetarian option now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. By placing mozzarella on top. Yes. Got it. Okay. But you could have alternative cheese, even if it's not a cheddar. Yes, yeah. Well, what's good about mozzarella on the top is that it's it's so it's so full of fat that it's actually going to spread and give a nice even layer. If you're going to use only cheddar or only parmesan, it doesn't melt as much. So, okay. put some oily parmesan here. We'll go quite heavy on the parmesan. We have a question about wine oh, from yeah. the UK. Daniel, he wants yeah. to know whether you should use a specific quality of wine when making your lasagna, or will any quality do? I think it's best always to use good quality wine in cooking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you could also use what you have at hand. But it, it does come through. So, okay. yeah. So it's, right. Okay. So you can drink it and you can put it into the dish. <laughs> so yeah, definitely. You can have a full compliment yeah. as well. So that's a good tip, apparently. So thank you. <laughs> I'll try that as well. <laughs> <laughs> so... Now, are you going to be using the steam version for this as well? Yes. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, so that's ready. So we'll just make a little clean up here. Now, we can't actually put it in the oven because we have the other one in there right now. But um, we, have made, we have made one earlier, so we'll, we'll present that now, I think. We'll just clean up a bit. Okay. We could actually put it in this oven. You do know we've got another oven. Oh, let's put it in the second <laughs> oven. But first, what about this one? Do we we, we let that go. Let it, okay. Yeah. So we don't show it. Okay. Yeah. The one that you're showing is the one you made earlier. That's okay. right. Got so it. we'll put this aside. So I'll just put that there for now. This is the one we made earlier. And I'm also just going to bring together a nice salad to serve with that. I love to have salad with lasagna okay. because it, they're quite rich, it's quite heavy, so it makes the perfect thing to put on the side, especially yeah. if you're having a beef lasagna or a meat lasagna. I'm just going to move this, prepare some onion. So this lasagna that you see, is that, this is like perfect for you, right? What's so good about this in terms of you know, your enjoyment of it? Why, why are you satisfied with this particularly? Is there a tip to getting a good taste. With the veg one or the meat one? Ah, with the, the one that you have up here, yeah. Oh, this is the vegetable yeah. one, yeah. So um, you were telling me before I'll, something about a crust. Oh yeah, that's my favorite <laughs> bit, the crust. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think having the mozzarella and ricotta and parmesan really helps with that. Okay, so. Yeah, and it, it's a real highlight. I mean, it's great to have the vegetables. It's great that it's fast and easy to put together. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it, it involves a lot. You could see from what we did, a lot less cooking than, than a meat lasagna. Yeah. yeah. So let's serve a piece up. Are we going to serve one here? And this is for me to try? Yes. Great. Looking forward to this, I have to say. <laughs> it absolutely does smell wonderful, yeah. especially with all these cheeses uh, coming together. Ooh. And we have one in the oven as well, so there's a whole, <laughs> there's a whole host of different smells. It's all fantastic. And you say you serve this with a salad? Yeah. So okay. I've just got um, some endive here, and just a little balsamic, a little olive oil, salt, some red onion. And is there any particular reason why you've chosen endive as a vegetable? Could I have anything, or does this give a certain complement to a, the, the vegetarian lasagna? Um, I just like the bitterness that's in this, okay. and um, yeah, I find it goes well. There's a little sweetness in here from the capsicum, uh, so from the peppers. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you say capsicum, I say pepper. <laughs> I'm not so, as sophisticated yeah. as you. <laughs> <laughs> Very worldly terms oh. here. So yeah, and that's it. That's you don't it. put it. You don't add a dress. This has already got a dressing on it. Okay. That does. Yeah, that I made in the bowl. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this this is our finished vegetable lasagna. Our finished vegetable lasagna. Now, of course, I have to try it. This yes. is the best bit. I'm very excited about it. <laughs> okay, so the great thing, all of these different layers, 
And I'm going to, should I have it with some of the end? I think have it on its own. Actually. Have it on its own? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if I pass the I Tom think, test? I think, yeah, I think you should add some clove to it. Ah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> good tip. Yeah. Very good <laughs> that tip. That is really very nice. Um, great with all those vegetables coming together. Hopefully, you know, uh, you have um, enjoyed this. You have found some new tips to take to your own cooking of lasagna. Thank you so much for watching. And um, yeah, take care. Thanks so much. Thank Bye -bye. you. Oh, good.